San Antonio is fiesta. And that's it, you know. When they say San Antonio, that means fiesta. Because San Antonio celebrates for everything. <laughs> We're the fiesta, fiesta capital of the world. <laughs> fiesta. It's more than the Spanish word for party. It's the 10 days of spring San Antonio looks forward to all year. It's a feeling, a culture, a purpose. It's the comida that makes your mouths water. The grito everyone knows. Viva fiesta! And the confetti coming down from everywhere. From where it started to where it is now. It's the opportunity to give back to our people, our gente, la comunidad. From lining the streets to the first cascarón cracking, Viva Fiesta, the story behind San Antonio's biggest party. When the event comes around, everybody's happy. And you've generally got, you know, a, a food on a stick and a cold adult beverage in your hand, and you're gonna run into people that you only see, and they seek you out or you seek them out, and it's a happy time, it's a celebration. And let's face it, nobody celebrates like San Antonio, anywhere. You know what Fiesta is like, it's like uh, maybe a feeling of, uh, you know, when you were a child and you were going to school and it was the last day of school and you knew summer uh, was the next day and you were going to have all this time off and you could do anything you wanted and celebrate the way that you wanted to. Uh, that's what Fiesta is. You get a chance to actually sit back and choose the way that you want to celebrate this good feeling and vibe that the city has, has set up uh, with so much success for so many years. You can find just about any type of food you can imagine. I just describe it as a great, happy time where everybody comes together, whether all, whether it's the west side, east side, north side, everybody comes together and has a great time and everybody's in love with each other. It's one big community block party. That's what it is. It's your neighbors that you don't know, you do know, that you haven't met yet, friends, but it's just like a big block party. It really is. You have an event on this side of town, this side of town, over here, over there, and everybody joins in and comes to, you know, it's just such a great celebration for this city. One, two, three, viva! Viva! But where did all the festivities, parades, and pageantry begin? So we really kind of trace the origins of Fiesta back to the very first Battle of Flowers parade in 1891. So it's something that's been around for a really long time. And when you take the idea of having this parade uh, that was created because the president was going to be coming to visit, he was going to be going to the Alamo on his trip to San Antonio, and our congresswoman's wife, um, Ellen Maury Sladen, thought, hey, let's have a parade to, to honor the president. And so she created this idea for the original Battle of Flowers parade. And it was such a hit that it becomes an annual event. My grandmother rode in the first parade around the Alamo, uh, pelting flowers at one another, the, 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 battle, the original Battle of Flowers. My grandmother was in that parade. And when you add the spring carnival that used to be sponsored by the, the local businessmen in San Antonio, you put carnival and parade together and you start to get a party. And so that's really sort of the origin stories of Fiesta. And in 1913, they actually created the Fiesta San Jacinto organization. And that oversaw the sort of formation of Fiesta and of a Fiesta events, uh, really through the 1950s. Well, there were kings at the beginning, like King Salamat, tamale spelled backwards, and King Omala, Alamo spelled backwards. How did royalty officially become part of Fiesta? When they created the Order of the Alamo, and that was founded by John Carrington in 1906, we get our first organization that's dedicated to creating royalty for Fiesta. And he creates an organization of members only, it's all men, and the court was based on the uh, Court of the United Kingdom. 
And so they used titles like duchesses and Lord High Chamberlain and Mistress of the Robes. It's all very formal. And even the earliest dresses were based on sort of the official presentation gowns that would be worn by young debutantes when they were presented at court. And so that's where we get the idea of having sort of a formal dress with a train and it had a prescribed length. Um, and so they start to follow those rules and traditions and to give the fiesta royalty a bit of that sort of uh, formality. And that's where our earliest royalty comes in. But in 1926, Carrington created an organization that gave us King Antonio. And once again, we had a formal process for naming a king associated with Fiesta. And these were the first Fiesta royals, and they remained the only royals up until uh, 1947. So we go a long time with just one king and one queen. But in 1947, we're living in a post-war world and we're looking for more equality, more diversity. And there is a push amongst San Antonio organizations to ask for more representation. And so this is when we start to see uh, the Reina de Fiesta de los Flores. We see Ray Feo. I, I think what was great about Ray Feo, it brought the Hispanic culture into Fiesta and, and brought the north side and west side together and south side and east side. And I think that's what's wonderful about the Ray Fayo program, that it brought that culture into Fiesta. You know, it goes back to the, you know, hundreds of years ago, came out of Spain. And, you know, there's a king and the king, you know, he had his elite crowd. You never had to be around the king. So the people brought their own king, the Ray Fayo. And the Ray Fayo is so well acknowledged and I think Logan Stewart, a media personality in radio, really gave us a lift. And then people like Dick Tips and Ronnie Gabriel and every king since has raised the level and the exposure. So when we go out there, people know, hey, that's Ray Fayo, and they all want to come up. They want a picture, they want a medal, they want to hug you, they want to kiss you. Would you kiss my baby? I mean, you walk through a crowd, it takes forever. And I, I think that in, in today's world, the Ray Fayo of Fiesta is very important. And we also see um, the Charo Queen. And so they get added into this royal pantheon. And over time, we add other Fiesta royalty, including Miss Fiesta, uh, Miss Teen Fiesta, eventually Miss San Antonio, and it grows. Battle of Flowers was the parade that started it all. But in 1941, a second, very unique parade was added to showcase what San Antonio has become well known for. And so the Cavaliers River Parade is started in 1941. And that really starts because the river walk was finished. And so we had this brand new project that had been completed downtown. And it was a way of showing off all of the work that we had gone into doing the, the river. And they took, uh, you know, little pontoon boats and uh, canoes and anything else that would float. And they created a parade. And there was a heavy military presence in the first um, river parade. Um, this was in keeping with the sort of spirit of the Texas Cavaliers, but it was also a reflection of the time in which it was created. It was 1941. We had not officially entered uh, World War II yet. It's before Pearl Harbor, but there was definitely a sense that our entrance into the war was impending. And so there were a lot of people that were in San Antonio that were going through basic training that were stationed at Fort Sam Houston or our local air bases. And so there really was this sort of pride of being a, a military city that was reflected in that very first river parade. But the parades didn't end there. In 1947, a third, livelier, more festive one was soon introduced. We have the Fiesta Flambeau, which was created in 1947. It was established by Reynolds Andrix, and he was a civil engineer working here in San Antonio. And he had just been elected to the board of Fiesta San Jacinto. And he didn't necessarily like what he saw and how things were running. He thought that uh, 
it needed to move beyond the just sort of the, the small number of events that were currently a part of, of Fiesta. He had a, a vision of something that was going to be bigger and grander. And he conceived of a night parade. Um, he had enjoyed the night parades uh, from Mardi Gras in New Orleans and thought that a similar idea could work here in San Antonio. And so he conceived the idea of an illuminated night parade. And in this night parade, it was originally illuminated by torches and you would have torch bearers that would walk along with the parade floats. And that was how the, the floats were illuminated. And today they're awash in color and LED lights and it's very modern, um, but it's uh, one of the largest illuminated parades in the country. And so it's a tradition that's really uh, carried on. It tends to have a bit of a lighter air, I feel, than the, the day parade. I think there's a lot more music and dancing and people seem to have a, sort of a looser feel uh, about participating. And I think that's partly by design of what Reynolds Andrix wanted to create with Flambeau, um, as to have a moment of contrast that we can have, you know, battle flowers during the day, which is, um, you know, the, the more traditional parade of what many people see across the country. And then the, the night parade, which will uh, be a bit more of a, of a party atmosphere. Fiesta, it's sewn into the fabric of our city and our culture. But how did this spring festival come to be known as Fiesta? The idea of Fiesta starts with the Fiesta San Jacinto. And this is the adoption of using the, the Spanish word for a party and adopting that word for the celebration. And so you have at the time a primarily Anglo group of people who are creating these organizations, who sit on the boards of these organizations. And it is a, an attempt at sort of saying, let's embrace the culture of San Antonio. But once again, it didn't fully embrace the sort of diversity of San Antonio in the makeup of the leadership of those organizations at the time. That really starts to, to change once again after World War II. Fiesta today brings us all together, but it didn't start out that way. Part of it is a reflection of the times in which it was created. The organizations that sort of ran the early events um, are really coming from the Anglo elite in San Antonio and really didn't have participation sort of outside of that circle. Uh, they were member only organizations um, and they were people who were socializing within sort of a limited social group. And that really sort of limited what the participation in those events looked like. And if royalty was only being selected from within, you know, that sort of small subsection of San Antonio, the, the royalty was going to reflect the organizations that were selecting. And what we see after World War II is a big push for equality. Yes, this is a great concept. A, a now. Because it involves the inclusiveness of, the, uh, of all the cultures and everybody uh, here in San Antonio. What makes up San Antonio? Growing up. <laughs> West side was Hispanic, east side was uh, uh, for the blacks, and uh, north side never to be seen by us, very, very rarely. And the south was uh, pretty much Hispanic also, going all the way down to the valley. We were never invited to be in the Battle of Flowers Parade. We decided to have our own parade <laughs> to counteract the Battle of Flowers. And ours was had in, on Saturday. And it went right down through town. We had our Refeo, you know, as a kind of a, a marshal, a parade marshal. And the only thing that we, growing up, was seeing the, um, the parades. That was the only thing that, that we got out of, of Fiesta. And everything was pretty much downtown. Uh, and 
None of us had that much money to spend during fiesta, <laughs> especially in those days. So we never really attended anything. The president of the uh, Fiesta Commission and its board was trying to make Fiesta more inclusive at that time. It was a time of change, uh, uh, but, they were, but they were all very helpful with us trying to change the culture of, culture of Fiesta to bring other parts of town into the Fiesta event. Like people were going to Fiesta long before we had our event, it just was that there was no, uh, no participating members from the, on the Fiesta board from uh, the black community. And that was something they were trying to remedy at that time. And as I said, we had some real dynamic people in the organization at that time. They love hobnobbing with Fiesta all, and all things Fiesta. And as I said, people in this city, they prepare all year for Fiesta. It's, we, we roll from rodeo right into Fiesta. And uh, this city comes out. And as I said, it's, uh, it's a great time to, to be with people, meet new people. And it's turned into a very great, it's great for this city. And that's part of why we get the Flambeau Parade, is that it became an opportunity to include some people who maybe weren't included previously in the day parade. Now today, that's not the case. We don't see that sort of uh, distinction. And certainly I think the organizations that organize the parades have taken great strides to move beyond what it started as in the late 19th century and the early 20th century. Wearing a medal shows just the inclusion of everything that we are doing here in San Antonio. It shows the support that you are giving the nonprofit, the small business. Many small businesses make medals, and that is their way. It's their calling card. It's for you to remember them. And by you wearing that, somebody else will see that and question and ask you, where does that, why are you wearing that? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> this is what we do here in San Antonio. Fiesta medals are one of the most popular items at Fiesta, but where did it all begin? Our medals are really inspired uh, in that military tradition. Being a military city, many of our medals sort of look like the, the dress medals that you might see on a uniform. And so there is certainly a connection to the, the military in San Antonio of having a medal to commemorate. But the first medal probably didn't look like that it was just a commemorative coin, and it was made by the artisan uh, Pompeo Capini. He creates that very first medal for the Fiesta San Jacinto. Orsinger was the first to actually make a pin out of it, and from then on, to think about where it started from there and how the nonprofits started benefiting from it, how these things are not only um, sold, but they're also exchanged. Fine. It's so creative, you know, these things used to be just a metal, now they're works of art. Uh, it, is a, it is a big part of Fiesta, uh, and, and that was one of the things after COVID we didn't know was going to come back, if, if that would come back as, as a thing. Uh, but it is a huge part, they get fancier every year, um, and it's, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, okay. this one is my favorite, the Queen of the Court. The Queen, Queen of the Court. That's my favorite. The, the medals are so beautiful now and they're still outstanding. It, it's unbelievable. Some medals, and one of the greatest artists in San Antonio, those have turned into jewelry. Those have literally turned into necklaces. I was asked, hey, why don't you make your own medal? I made my own that year. That was the first one that I made for myself in 2011. It was a little sugar skull, and it took off. It won best in San Antonio that year. Then from there, it is just grown every year. 2019 was probably the biggest year. That was when I did myself over 400 designs. There are so many more people making medals also, and you can imagine how many medals were around in, that, in this city at that time. The love that we have for the city, it's here, and, and it's, it shows in medals. You'll I learn a little something new at the Battle of Flowers. That's right. And there they go by in another gorgeous float. 
and more shoes. In the 1990s, um, we started to get the crowd shouting, show us your shoes during the parade. The word had sort of gotten out that these women in these beautiful evening gowns were dressed for comfort while they were standing up on the parade floats. And part of this is practical because you have to be hoisted up onto the parade floats and you certainly don't want to put any holes in the, the parade float. And so wearing flat shoes is a bonus. It started out with people wearing flip flops or uh, sort of uh, house shoes and things like that. And they started to make it really fun and you know see how crazy they could get. But a more recent tradition is to have custom made boots. And these are really a way of having a memory of your time in Fiesta. It sort of marks that moment as like a rite of passage. And so you get to have these custom boots that you can wear, not just during Fiesta, but for other events that sort of mark the occasion. They come in with colors and stuff that, colors and patterns that we could go off of, uh, you know. And we try to, we make the boot as far as, uh, so they won't, um, so they'll be able to use it after Fiesta, not just all festive. Some of them are pretty fe real festive, but that's what they want. And it's whatever they desire, whatever they want, that's what we'll do. Oh, it's a great deal to me now. I mean, it's an honor to do boots for them. It's fun to see the boots and see them pass by. That's cool, yeah. Uh, when, they, when I see their face, yeah, it feels good. It feels really good. It's just to know that they're wearing our boots here, it's, it's awesome. Francis goes by the nickname of Fanny, and her gown represents the paintings in the Vatican Palace in Rome, Italy. Each dress has to tell a story by itself when the public sees it on its own. And so you get their title, and then you see all of the design of the dress, and that should tell you the entire story. And what happens is the Mistress of the Robes is working on these ideas for the coronation up to two years in advance. But the dressmakers aren't. They don't actually get the designs that come from the Mistress of the Robes and the court artists until about nine months before the coronation. So after we finish Fiesta in May, the designs will be unveiled for the next court. So they've become more detailed and more intricate over time. And when you see the dresses today, I mean, some of them are completely covered in beads and rhinestones and you name it. Um, and that's all been planned out in advance. And so it's a, a really sort of unsung part of the story that we've got this local couture um, group of people here in San Antonio that create these remarkable works of art. And they've influenced other festivals and traditions around the state. It's really kind of inspired a, a great local community of people that create all of these looks that kind of give us the flair that we expect from Fiesta. I think I want this for the opening for Fiesta Fiesta. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a disco ball hat for this. And the ball actually so rotates this will be on my head. a little shorter. Yeah, but same thing is caught down here. And, and creatively, for me now with Fiesta, it's I, I make all my stuff. Well, with Phil's help, but I do make a lot of hats. I don't know if you see my hats, but they're giant. They're big hats. They don't even fit in my car. No, those those. Phil, they don't fit in my car. I have to do the measurements the, of my car now. Yeah. I have to measure my hat to fit in, into my car uh -huh. because sometimes they're so big they don't fit. So, but anyway, I make a lot of things. And I even make my costumes with Phil's help. I he will do something for me, but I'll keep adding to it. I yeah. keep embellishing and adding more stuff to it because people like that. I'm very visual in my presentation of myself as quote unquote Mr. Fiesta, which is just a title that was given to me because I just, I fell in, I, I love Fiesta so much. But anyway, that's the, the part of uh, the more uh, uh, updated version of me as an adult man was just falling into love with Fiesta by being able to make costumes to wear to different kinds of events and just showing up and being there and people just curious about who is this yeah. guy. While the festivities, food, parades, and pageantry are all staples of the 10-day festival, the true heart and purpose of Fiesta is to give back. 
give back to our people, our community, our gente. The idea of nonprofits um, being involved in Fiesta is longstanding. Many of the organizations that are involved have been nonprofits from the beginning. Each of the official participating member organizations has to be a nonprofit. So all of them are trying to give back in some capacity. So it is a big party and that's what everybody thinks of, but that party has evolved into an, a purpose for each one of those PMOs. Uh, Fiesta was a great opportunity for them to have an event that would benefit um, their organization, a way of taking advantage of sort of a, a citywide audience. Um, we see this perfectly represented with the San Antonio Conservation Society, um, which was a, a local nonprofit, and their night in old San Antonio is a great example of how a nonprofit establishes an event that becomes a fiesta favorite, and it's one of their largest fundraisers throughout the year. A Night in San Antonio is the major fundraiser for the Conservation Society and brings in more revenue for preservation nationwide for an organization for preservation than any other event in the nation. The reality of it is, is that people that live outside 1604 that move to San Antonio, they don't know about San Antonio and they may not even come downtown for anything because of communities that are self-sufficient, like out Calabria, Bandera, out 281. They have no reason to come inside I-10. But when they actually arrive downtown at an event, and especially at Neosa, and they come to La Villita, which by the way, is over 300 years old and is the longest continuously occupied neighborhood in the United States, you actually see it and feel it and smell it and eat from it when you're here. So people that are that have never been and they come down for the event, yes, they do see the historic buildings and they see what beauty lies downtown. And so it's a, a more tangible, it's a tangible example of what preservation is. There is just so much history in San Antonio that is left and still there to preserve and protect. The San Antonio Zulu Association hosts the three-day Fiesta event, Taste of New Orleans, every year at Sunken Garden. Believe it or not, Fiesta is still about giving back. You know, a lot of people, they love the, the, the celebrations and the merriment and the food and everything else, but it, it actually has a bigger purpose. And, and all of those 501c3s that participate utilize that to, to, as a great opportunity to go towards uh, the fundraising efforts that they have for each year. And so we're, we're glad as a Zulu Association to participate in that. Uh, we've been doing it for over 35 years. Uh, our scholarship program allows us the opportunity to give back uh, to generally we'll choose uh, 20 recipients. 10 young women, 10 young men uh, that, that go through a, a submission and application program and we provide them a college scholarship. But that's not the only way. All throughout the year, we are working with a number of other 501c3s to just kind of give back to them and help them do more of what they do. So when we have our events, uh, it's not just helping those for scholarships, uh, it's also helping the community. We've worked with a number of groups like the Better Women's Shelter, uh, Cancer Research, and a number of others that are out there. Uh, we have a number of events that we do, but our largest uh, staple is a taste in New Orleans for the San Antonio Fiesta Commission. The Rey Feo Consejo Educational Foundation puts on Fiesta de los Reyes, a 10-day event at Historic Market Square in downtown San Antonio. Fiesta de los Reyes is phenomenal for us. We started in 2010, so we've got 13 years. You take a year off for the pandemic, but we raise $100,000 off of this event just for scholarships. We raise money to support our king, to get him out in the public, get the message across. It's about educating our youth, keeping them in school, get them to college, give them a leg up. Piñatas in the Barrio is a fiesta event created for seniors on the west side of San Antonio. So my sister and I, my dad, were the brainchilds of this particular event called Piñatas in the Barrio. We got together and said, let's create an event for our senior citizens. And that's how this all started. 
Uh, it was for our senior citizens. We wanted to bring an event to the west side of San Antonio for our senior citizens that had limited income on the west side of San Antonio, that couldn't afford the Niosas, the oyster bakes. Uh, nothing against oyster bakes, because I went to St. Mary's and I loved oyster bakes. But because of their income, we said, you know what, let's just create an event for them. Because, hey, seniors, uh, they want a fiesta too, and I'm a senior now. <laughs> so um, that's how that it all started. So uh, that turned into Youth at Risk. Uh, and we also, um, because of the different people on the West Side that are artists, we decided, you know what, we need to help our senior citizens and also our diverse artists on the West Side. We have a lot of West Siders that uh, draw, a lot of them like to dance. There's a, a mass amount of, of, of artists from the West Side that have a passion for what they do, you know, and, and we need to help those people. There's a lot of times these, these girls and guys that get into the arts, they don't have the money to continue their education. So proceeds from our event go to help these people that have that passion to continue uh, with what they, they want to do in their life with, when it comes to the arts. A Day in Old Mexico is the fiesta event put on by the San Antonio Charro Association. It's a traditional Mexican rodeo hosted at their ranch on the south side of San Antonio. It's very big. This, we live off fiesta. What we make on Fiesta, we have competitions. We get to go out to compete against other teams all over Texas. Right now, we are the state champs for 2023. Now, you know, it's a new year. We're starting all over, but that's how we live. We're able to pay for the guys, the teams to go out, the girls to go out and, and compete. And um, with everything that Fiesta helps us, we're trying to give back to the community. We did a lot of events. We have our posadas, our trunk or treat that we tried for the first year this year. The little girls did that, the Tejanitas. And it was a success. We bought like candy, like three truck boats. We, didn't, we weren't expecting so many people, but we try to give back to the community. Taste of the North Side is Brighton Center's staple fiesta event and helps children with disabilities and delays. So Taste of the North Side was started as like a little bitty wine and cheese event in a K. Charles Salon lobby, and all of the proceeds were gonna go back to the Brighton Center. And I think that first year they raised $2,500 and were ecstatic about it. This was the year 2000, it was a brand new fundraising event. And so now to see where it's come in 2024, where we're anticipating over half a million dollars to be raised is pretty significant. And if we didn't have Fiesta, if we didn't have Taste of the North Side, we would not be able to serve the more than 4,000 children with delays and disabilities that we do every year. The illness has hit several parts of the state, now including San Antonio. Fiesta postponed and other events canceled. A state disaster for all counties in the state of Texas. A fiesta has been postponed. That hasn't happened since uh, nearly 80 years ago, since World War II. The goal of this effort right now is to make sure that we contain the spread of this disease in San Antonio. The charity groups scheduled to be part of fiesta. How they are planning on reaching their goal even after San Antonio's biggest party is getting pushed back. My recollection is we lost, I believe, four of over 100 PMOs the following year because they could not come back from COVID. So it devastated the commission in general. Uh, most of the organizations, as you know, didn't put on an event that year. Some were able to modify their events and did it outside of an official fiesta window. Um, for example, the Bow Flowers Parade did a street, uh, a house decorating thing that, that, that they were judged from the street, right? Um, so organizations still, still made some money. The commission operates on a thin margin anyway. So if something like COVID happens where we don't have the revenue from advertising or sales, beer sales, what have you. It was very devastating for us. Uh, and again, we changed our business model where we, if you're an official, official Fiesta event, you had to put on an event during Fiesta, right? We changed our model and gave, gave organizations a year or two after that to say, if you need a couple years to get back on your feet, we'll help you and we're not gonna disqualify you from being an official Fiesta event. But it was devastating. You know, the commission itself, we sold our building on Broadway uh, which was in large part to COVID. It hurt, we're like everybody else. We're still bleeding money like everybody else. You know, we had already planned an event. We already had money out. So we had to tighten the, the bolts down there for about another nine months till we got the next one up and running. When COVID hit, um, we didn't really know what to do. Taste of the North Side had become such a staple in our fundraising efforts. 
And not only did we not do it in 2020, but we didn't do it in 2021 either. So we really had to shift some focus to fundraising in non-traditional ways, but it really did impact our bottom line. It really did. To have it come back in 2022 was an incredible blessing, but ever since COVID, we still are feeling the ramifications of losing those, those two years. You know, that was a period of time uh, that no one saw coming. Uh, everyone had to be reactive. Uh, so we decided to move quickly to make sure that we could do things safely. The Fiesta Commission in the city of San Antonio uh, opted for uh, the opportunity to keep the citizens community safe. And so when we ran into COVID and, you know, we actually did not actually have our event, you know, thank God, you know, for our, our, our elder Zulus who are great at planning, great with finance and things of that nature, you know, we were still stable. Uh, we were still stable without having to provide a fiesta at that time, but it did uh, hamper, you know, our efforts and our energy uh, to give back more. Oh, COVID really affected us. We, we didn't do it one year. We, we, the one year there was COVID, we were, we were out and uh, that really put a damper on, on you, know, to, you know, on our event and the, well, the two events that we have. Um, and, uh, but we're still here, we're, 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 we're gonna siguiendole, you know. It affected us a lot. Uh, we had to pinch our pennies and uh, we got through it. And then uh, it became, what, in June of the next year, I believe it was. And um, we started all over again with so many nonprofits relying on Fiesta, COVID was not going to stop the party, in large part due to the safety nets provided by the Fiesta Commission, which was created for times just like this. As more organizations start to become involved in Fiesta, the Fiesta Commission, which had been established in, I believe, 1959, and 1970, Mayor Lila Cockrell said the Fiesta Commission was empowered to negotiate with the city of San Antonio on behalf of all the organizations. The Fiesta Commission is, is basically an overarching entity that lies between the participating member organizations or PMOs and the city so that each organization doesn't have to go to the city for things that they need like barricades or police support or those kind of things. So Fiesta Commission acts as the intermediary to do all that. Uh, but we've also evolved into an organization that sets standards for organizations that want to be an official Fiesta event and putting on an event with the city support during the 10 days of Fiesta. Fiesta commissions an umbrella. It helps people with insurance, it helps them with the marketing, uh, the advertising. I mean, a lot of people don't have never done the event and they're there to kind of help them along. So we all grow together. It's one big ship. With, with the Fiesta Commission being intentional about that message, it reminds people, for one, to be responsible with what you're doing, but also just choose which way you'd like to give back. You'll get the same type of feeling of, of uh, atmosphere, uh, celebration, and just kind of a laid back leisure thing that's a big San Antonio staple for our tourism industry, uh, which is always great. But people do get that message and understand that I'm actually giving back while having a good time. And if you can do that with your family and your friends with you safely, it's the best decision you can make. And uh, the Fiesta has given us a lot of opportunities to show ourselves. You know, Fiesta in a lot of ways put Brighton on the map. It, like I said, it has given us a, a megaphone to talk about who we are and our services to the community. And in addition to the fundraising, having an opportunity to be seen that way to the masses um, has been an, a really incredible opportunity for us to serve more families. Fiesta is wonderful, and without Fiesta, we would not have all the scholarship programs, all the nonprofit help, and all the foundation help. But like, like without Fiesta, it would not have happened. And that's what's wonderful about Fiesta, to have the fun and have the good times and everybody comes together and at the same time be able to raise money to help the community. You know, Fiesta Commission is doing a phenomenal job. I mean, they really listen to the heartbeat of the city uh, and the new things that are going on. There seems like every year there's additional uh, additional events that are taking place that have never been done before. And to see people, you know, look for these new opportunities is great. It gives people a chance to elevate their voice and, and share, you know, you know, it would be great if we had this. 
well, we have that. Uh, they've got a very open ear to that. But what's even more rewarding to that, I think, is to be a little bit bigger in the way that we have people come from across the rest of the state. We have a lot of people that come from all over the world that come here just to visit our fine city. But I can tell you they're doing a great job because the crowds are showing it. There's, there's growing, growing numbers of people that are out there. But I think the city, uh, the Fiesta Commission is doing a great job in making sure people know not only is it good, it's safe, it's fun, but we're here. But uh, come here and stay a while. It's, it's definitely worth your time and you give back more every time you go. So I think it's something that is here to stay. Um, I don't see it. Um, I don't know, the, the, the chiste will always be there in it <laughs> because it is puro San Antonio. That's one of the things that I love about our city is that we embrace so many different things, the food, the culture, and most of all, people. I see it growing and you, you think, how can you grow? Everyone's busting at the seams, but there's a lot more territory. You know, Hemisphere Park just opened up. You know, they're starting to use uh, Sunken Gardens more, starting to use parks more to do bigger events and uh, expand. So there's expansion for everybody. It's just a matter of, it takes about a good year to plan an event that's already existing. If it's non-existing, it takes about two years. There are various uh, numbers out there of how, how many people come to Fiesta from outside of the immediate surrounding area, right? Like come from Mexico or possibly from another state. I don't, I'm not sure we really have a good handle on that yet, uh, but we have been working with the city and, and uh, uh, the Visitors Bureau. Uh, and they, they want to go out to other states, you know, in the United States and promote Fiesta more to get more of the uh, out-of-towners to come and enjoy Fiesta. There's a, a lot of people believe that all the hotels are full and everything during Fiesta, but it's really not true. Um, so there is room to grow during Fiesta. We just have to find the target audience to come and help us out with that. The Fiesta Commission as an organization is in good hands. Uh, we got a really good executive director in Steve Rosenauer. The pipeline is good with people that are coming through to run the organization. Uh, it, we're financially better off now than, than we were just prior, to Fiesta, or just prior to COVID. So we're on the right trajectory. Fiesta is going to be fun for years to come. It's, it, it's growing and it, it, it's wonderful. The Fiesta Commission, the people that are involved, the leaders are taking it to a different level. Uh, one of these days, maybe, you know, we'll have three-story floats, but with our telephone lines and that, uh, it's going to happen for the parade. But the level of, of the people that are involved and, and the event and all the organizations that want to join and be official PMOs, which are you know, the uh, part of the group of Fiesta Commission. Uh, I, I, it just, it, it, it just amazing how many people want to be involved. Fiesta ain't gonna go nowhere. And uh, I'm gonna continue doing it until I, I can't do it anymore. I love this town and wouldn't go anywhere else. Fiesta is more than just a party. It truly is a lifeline that gives back to our city. It's in every chicken on a stick, gordita, and funnel cake. In every cold beverage, cascaron, and flower crown. It gives smiles, joy, and laughter, bringing us all together. A real fiesta for all. And allows our community, our people, nuestra ciudad, to continue thriving long after the final piece of confetti hits the ground. Fiesta is happiness. If you want to, if you want to be so happy, when you leave a city, you come to San Antonio, and I guarantee you, by the time you get to San Antonio, to the time you leave, you're gonna have the happiest smile in your face you ever known, and your heart's gonna be triple by the time you leave. And when you get to your state or your city, all you're gonna talk about is the San Antonio fiesta.